guys and welcome to Shalom Aleichem. So today I wanted to talk to you about the IOCDF's OCD walk once again because it's getting to that time of year again. So this year I wanted to talk to you guys about why I walk and also why you should walk too. First of all, I walk for community. OCD walks like OCDCon are a great way to meet people who have a very similar life experience without going to an intensive program like I did. <laughs> it's also a great way to catch up with people that you know from the OCD community online or who you've met in person in the past. For me, over the past few years, I've met some amazing, wonderful people through the IOCDF. It really wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have started going to OCDCon and going to the IOCDFs like OCD Walks, well mostly OCDCon, but Regardless, getting involved with the OCD community online led to me getting involved with them in person and that's been one of like the best decisions I've ever made. So I found such a great, tight-knit, amazing group of friends who are just perfect and wonderful in every way and I love them with all of my heart. But let's get real, like let's get down to business defeat the Huns. Like, let's get serious here. So, a community is a great thing and it's like really personally beneficial for me, but also I walk in order to help the IOCDF fundraise. And now, why would I want to do that? Why do I care about money going to an organization and, you know, not myself? <laughs> Well, I do that because I care about what the, IOCD, what the IOCDF is doing. So the money that we go to goes to one of my new favorite things, research. Um, so that's research on how to cure OCD and where OCD comes from, along with related disorders, tics, Tourette's, dermatillomania, dermatillomania beep, 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 so many acronyms, <laughs> but like all of all of your, all of our favorite um, OCD and related disorders, everything. But research is absolutely like vital to figuring out how to help people live better lives, and it's actually so awesome. And I completely geek out over it, and it's wonderful. Research, yes. Another place our money goes to is training therapists. The IOCDF does a number of trainings throughout the year and um, I know they have some at OCDCon as well. I'm sure it also goes to just maintaining the IOCDF and the OCDCon and all of that fun stuff that we so appreciate as the OCD community. Here's why it matters to me. The accessibility of ERP and this kind of training and research matters to me because ERP changed my life simply. And I want to help as many people as possible get that life-changing experience. Ideally, everyone who has OCD should be able to go through ERP and have a successful treatment and have a therapist who understands OCD and understands pure O obsessions, pure O, because technically that's a misnomer, but who understands all kinds of OCD all across the spectrum and who knows how to treat us and how to make us better because that's the important thing. I had a therapist who said she treated OCD but actually didn't and bless her heart I'm sure she's a wonderful person and I don't think she was trying to scam me or anything but it's sad. It's sad because most professionals actually don't know what OCD really is. They believe the stereotypes um, and they're professionals, they're psychologists, they're psychiatrists, and they don't know what OCD is, and more importantly, they don't know how to treat it. And so there are people who have OCD who are going to these psychologists who don't know what they're doing, and they're not getting better, or sometimes they're getting worse. That's not okay. The IOCDF is doing a great job at changing that, at changing the stigma and training therapists. It's wonderful, and that's why I donate and want to fundraise for the IOCDF. Honestly, the taste that I got of how hard it was to find a ERP therapist after I was diagnosed is nothing compared to what other people have experienced. Some people, it took decades to be diagnosed and to be treated. But on the other hand, me only getting a taste of that shows the monumental progress that's been made. I remember when I went to the, what was it, 2016? 2016 OCD walk in Georgia, I think? Um, Dr. Michael Jenicki was the Grand Marshal and he said 30 years ago if they had held an OCD walk not even like half as many people would have shown up. No one knew about OCD, there was no community and it was it was just like so much more stigmatized. So you can see and like the IFCDF I think they've been around for like 30 years, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but they've, they've been around a long time. They've been like really leading the charge for OCD advocacy. And so you can really see how like it's worked. They're doing a great job. So why should you walk and fundraise for the IOCDF? Yes, you. So this year, the IOCDF wants you guys to talk about why you walk and film a video telling us all why you're walking for OCD. 
and I want to tell you why that is a brilliant idea. Obviously I'm biased because I do that every year, but regardless, here is why you should be walking and fundraising and filming a video about why you walk for OCD advocacy. <laughs> so mainly, this is this really cheesy, cheesy quote that I absolutely adore. Your story could be the key that unlocks someone else's prison. So this quote may be cheesy, but it is also true. And I'll tell you why. I've had people tell me that my videos were the reason that they found out that they had OCD. I've had people tell me that that's the reason that they went to see a psychiatrist. Also, this is the wildest thing to me. Some of my distant family members have come to me and said that my videos helped them and that, like, and asked me for advice for dealing with OCD. My family members, and I know OCD runs in families, but I didn't expect that any of my family members also had OCD. But then I had people like coming to me, like I've had at least, I've had a good handful, you guys, of people being like, hey, I have OCD, and like, or hey, my videos showed me that I have OCD and I had this really obscure like type of OCD and none of my doctors knew what it was. And it's like, I'm changing my family members' lives by making videos for strangers on the internet. So another reason that you should totally tell us your story is that being authentic makes other people feel comfortable with being authentic themselves. That's an absolutely beautiful thing. And like, guys, I'm just me. Like, I was a 17-year-old filming in her bedroom, and I am a 22-year-old filming in her bedroom. <laughs> I'm on like my old as heck. Uh, Rebel T3 camera DSLR and I have I have like 4,000 subscribers like 4,000 for, first of all can we whoa wow but I have 4,000 subscribers and that's like relatively low for YouTube but it's a lot for me and I certainly never expected to ever get this big like I never expected to get 4,000 subscribers I was just wanting to make things for people on the internet that would maybe possibly be helpful and you guys liked it so Thanks for joining me. <laughs> and you know, guys, honestly, I did I, I did nothing except for except get help for my OCD and then talk about it. I wish I had a way to show you guys how valuable your story is to people, but all I really have is anecdotal evidence that me and my friends who have shared their stories, bravely shared their stories, have impacted people all of us in ways that we never imagined we could. Now if you want to advocate for OCD right now and you want to use this as a chance to share your story, it doesn't even have to be your story. Sharing why you walk doesn't have to mean telling like the nitty gritty details of your own personal life. Um, maybe someone inspires you who has OCD or a related disorder. Um, maybe your close family member has OCD or Tourette's and you want to walk for them. Maybe you're a professional. Or you could do the trick that I learned um, while working as a resident counselor over the summer and do the whole uh, my friend thing because we weren't supposed to tell the kids that we had might have might have had like our own personal mental health difficulties because like boundaries are very important so you can always go for that and if you need other examples of um, why you walk you can always look at my videos from previous years because not to, sh to like shamelessly plug myself but I've been kind of creative with how I go about these videos because every year that I do it my reasons for walking change and my circumstances change. And so, yeah, you can check those out. So, and I just wanna say like, going off of what I was saying earlier, all of the advocates in the OCD community were just people who had an experience with OCD and wanted to help others. And there are tons of blogs, blogs that you haven't even seen yet, but they are making waves in their personal communities and their online communities and all of their communities that they're involved in and that's what matters. So I have another cheesy quote for us all. I think Mother Mother Teresa said something like this. Um, I don't remember the exact quote. A let me look it up, let me look it up. Awkward looking it up, dance. Ah, Mother Teresa once said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. I think that's the one. <laughs> What's the other one? I'm trying to, maybe that wasn't the one. Okay, Dalai, Dalai, Dalai Lama. And you know, none of these could be right. Look, at, there's so many, there's so many, this, okay, like the very similar quotes being attributed to very different people. Um, Just as ripples spread out when a single pebble is dropped into water, the actions of individuals can have far-reaching effects. I don't think that's the one I was going for either. But anyway, you get the point. This is another reason why we must share our stories. Because throwing a stone in the water creates many ripples. And what we 
say to someone, how we talk about OCD to someone, or any mental illness or any cause, will change how they view it and then they talk to the next person. That's how the world changes. So yeah, like that's that's what us OCD advocates do. Like we are just throwing stones in the water and and not all OCD advocates have OCD. Like you can advocate for a cause um and say like, "Hey, I love this person and they're really struggling and I want to do this for them. I'm walking for this person who I love." So please make a video Tell us why you're walking. In conclusion, this year the IOCDF wants you to make a video about why you walk and if you feel like you want to fundraise and you want to walk and you want to make a video or any one of those things, um, please go ahead and make a video about why you walk and why you fundraise for the IOCDF and yeah. And I know I usually conclude these videos by telling you where I'm gonna be, but I don't know where I'm gonna be this year because my summer plans are totally up in the air right now. So yay uncertainty! So if you guys feel led to do this, go ahead over to the IOCDF's new and improved fundraising page. And the IOCDF also has a fundraising toolkit to help you, to walk you through how to fundraise. And I'd also mention that sharing why you walk is a great way to generate interest in your fundraiser. By the way, you guys, this year the IOCDF has completely expanded how many walks they're having. If you live in the United States, there's probably one near, near you. There's even a map that I can post right on here. Whoa, that's a lot of walks. And if you can't find one in your area, you can easily create a grassroots walk yourself for your local OCD community. So, that being said, no matter where you're walking, I can't wait to see why you guys walk for OCD. Please go ahead and make those videos and Tag me and the ICDF in them because I would love to see them. And again, you guys, just like one person throws a stone in the water and creates that ripple effect, if all of us goes out and walks, we will far surpass 100, 1 million steps. <laughs> we will far surpass 1 million steps for OCD. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.